that you do not see. one of the most vicious attacks ever caught on surveillance. A convenience store clerk repeatedly stabbed late one night in Georgia. At 1017, the clerk, DK Chadhari, is completely overpowered by the six foot two attacker and shoved into a back storage area. Right here, you see the clerk kick a gun out of the assailant's hand, but the attacker quickly pulls a knife. Another security camera inside the store shows customers are totally unaware of the brutality going on in the back room. To keep the clerk quiet, the heartless killer duct tapes the poor man's mouth, then covers his nose to silence his last breath. DK Choudhury never had a chance. The medical examiner later testified that he would have been dead within a few minutes. But even if the wound was delivered in a hospital, uh, it would have been very hard to save his life because the gun lost him how quickly he lost that blood. Once DK is dead, the assailant scrambles between the back room and the front counter, and at one point actually tells customers to get out. He ends up having some contact with them, talks to them, tells them the store is closed, there's been an emergency, and that they need to leave and ultimately convinces them to leave. They don't realize what's happened. Customers are in the store confused, but they do ultimately leave and drive off. Mems pleaded not guilty. During her trial, her odd behavior didn't change. A lot of people got upset when she would come into the courtroom and blow kisses at people and make signs to some of her family that was there. signs to some of her family that was there. She would turn around and make gestures to members of the audience, she would make eye contact with the camera, make gestures to the camera, and that went on and off and on. She would laugh and even giggle at times during the trial, uh, during witness questioning, and her answers she didn't like. She even laughed and giggled some during her own attorney's closing argument to the jury, and you could tell that that was not helping her with the jury in any way. Turns out, that is a bit of an understatement. In a trial that went from opening statements to closing arguments in five days, deliberations took less than an hour. Where the jury found the defendant, count one, Alice Murray, guilty. The inhabitants of Prague lived their daily lives against the background of Nazi occupation.
For many, however, the pursuit of pleasure went on as before. Peace and prosperity reigned in Bohemia and Moravia. Something is always happening. But when it happens, people don't always see it or understand it or accept it. The biggest demonstration of loyalty to the Third Reich took place in Wenceslas Square. Over 200,000 Czech men and women raised their arms in a Nazi salute while singing their national anthem. For other Czechs, the terror continued. Almost 5,000 were arrested and sent to Mauthausen concentration camp. Among the victims were those considered natural leaders of the Czech nation. His draconian measures earned Heydrich a new title, the Hangman of Prague. Many Czechs seemed ready to collaborate. What Heydrich did not know was that in distant London, other Czechs were already planning his destruction. And his Mercedes SS3 approached the corner. On the opposite side of the road from the waiting parachutists. Something is always happening. But when it happens, people don't always see it, or understand it, or accept it. On the opposite side of the road from the waiting parachutists, a tram came up the hill. As Heydrich's car slowed down and rounded the corner, Gabchik dropped the raincoat, raised his gun at point-blank range, and pulled the trigger. Nothing happened. The gun had jammed. Behind the sinister black flags at the Petchek Palace, headquarters of the Prague Gestapo, the investigation began in earnest. The evidence left at the scene of the ambush, together with the accounts of witnesses rounded up by the Gestapo, gave the first clues as to what had happened. The impact bomb had exploded in the gutter near the right back wheel at approximately 10.35. Kubish staggered back, hit by pieces of the car's bodywork. The blast blew out the windows of the tram. Heydrich jumped from the car and fired two shots at Kubish, before slumping down wounded against the railings. Kubish ran for his bicycle, throwing away his briefcase which contained a second bomb. He fired into the air to frighten off the tram passengers who were trying to catch him and escaped downhill into the city. Gubchik threw down his useless Sten gun and drew a pistol. Unable to reach his bicycle, he was chased by Heydrich's driver, Oberschaffuhrer Klein. He tried to hide in a butcher's shop, but finding no rear exit, turned back into the street where he encountered Klein. Gubchik shot the German, firing twice.
whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand. Right. Um, and nobody was really bothering to explain it to me. They don't. <clears throat> and uh, it, it, and I formed a bunch of opinions about the town and about the people in it that were like, surely that couldn't be because a whole place can't be like, you know, weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and, and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at them and, mm -hmm. and they tell you don't go into the house on the hill. And it's like that. Mm -hmm. And then you go away and you think, no, that's, I was wrong. I mean, that's insane thinking. I'm paranoid. I imagined that stuff. That couldn't be the reason for why so-and-so was acting like, could it? Mm -hmm. And then you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track mm -hmm. with a lot of this stuff. Not specifically on no. track, but that you could, uh, that some of your worst nightmares were real at the time. And you think, oh. mm -hmm. now this is what I mean by actually starting to swim up or downstream with the rest of the salmon, mm. you know, eventually, if you stay here long enough, yeah. you'll find yourself doing that. Um, and you have to... There's a way of doing it without doing it. Mm. That takes time. Mm. Uh, and it takes relaxation. Mm. Not being uncomfortable about not being uncomfortable realizing it for what it is projecting n understanding what it is once you understand it well then you're not afraid of it anymore mm -hmm. so you can just walk around it and through it and, mm -hmm. and then get on with what you tried to get on with in the first place a place like this can humiliate you mm -hmm. and it can be it can either it can humiliate you it can be humbling i mean it, it does rip your life to pieces does it if you'll let it yeah and it's always pounding at the walls. It's yeah. these little guys, these little heathens with no soul downstairs with horns. Stop talking with strangers. Stop talking with monkeys. Why am I unhappy? Okay. Okay, so this. Stephanie Gaga hybrid. Stephanie Gaga hybrid. You look, but you do not see. Stephanie Gaga hybrid.
hybrid. Something is always happening. But when it happens, people don't always see it or understand it or accept it. One remote viewing project that I was involved with has data that suggests that Jesus was in fact not even crucified and that Judas was the guy who helped him get out of the situation by leading the authorities to the wrong person. According to these data, someone else was crucified in his place. Nonetheless, Jesus let it happen, knowing that no one ever really dies and the Romans were going to kill someone physically no matter what. Jesus caused too much of a stir for there not to be a reaction, and the authorities were not going to tolerate it any longer. Judas pulled off the switch, and the rest is history. Someone else was crucified in his place. Something is always happening, but when it happens, people don't always see it, or understand it, or accept it. Do me a favor, stop talking with strangers, stop talking with monkeys. Stephanie Gaga Hybrid. Something is always happening, but when it happens, people don't always see it, or understand it, or accept it. Stop talking with strangers. Do me a favor, stop talking with strangers. Stop talking with monkeys. I'm Jason Caldwell, I'm 31 years old. I've lived in Mount Sterling, Kentucky my whole life. I like to hunt, fish, and take care of my kids. I'm, my name is Jeff Caldwell, and I'm his father. Got a great son here, I'm really proud of him.
genuinely these chaps have stopped when the red light went on it does say wait here and they're off seriously no fucking way <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.